everybody! This is Heather Hall. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified leaf therapist. I specialize in functional medicine for autoimmune disease and other chronic diseases. And my passion is teaching you how to beat chronic disease and eat your way back to health. So tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about saturated fats and answer the question to some extent of are saturated fats really bad for you? And I'd love to know your thoughts on this topic. I'd love to kind of know where people stand right now um, on your thoughts about saturated fats. So leave me a comment and let me know if you uh, still are in the, you know, the thinking that saturated fats are bad for you or if you believe something differently. So let me know your thoughts around saturated fats in the comments. I'd love to see where people stand right now. Um, so the recommendations to avoid saturated fats have been around, um, they've really been adopted by a lot of agencies since about the 1970s officially, but um, the, the recommendations kind of go back all the way to the 1950s, almost 70 years ago, when there was a, a, a study conducted called the Seven Country Study, done by researcher Ansel Keys. And in that study, they found that the countries that ate the most saturated fats actually also had the highest incidence of heart disease. So it's not a cause and effect study where they could say for sure saturated fats cause heart disease. It's just an observation that they made, that these, that these uh, countries that were studied had the highest incidence of heart disease. Okay. Um, and then there was also another observation that was made um, in other studies that saturated fat can actually raise total cholesterol levels, which is associated with heart disease. And we have some people jumping on. Thanks for joining. Leave me a comment as you join in. Let me know what your thoughts are around saturated fats. Do you believe that they are bad for you? Or um, is that something you've changed your mind about? Because I want to kind of see where people are at these days in their thinking around saturated fats. Um, anyway, so so a lot of assumptions were made off of these these studies, and a lot of agencies recommended the um, or adopted the recommendation to avoid saturated fats. And so that's where we've been at for the last several decades. Um, although. It's important to note that there has never been a direct link between saturated fats and heart disease ever found. So there's, been, there's never been a study finding a direct link between heart disease and saturated fat intake. So we're going to look at six reasons why these long-standing recommendations to eat a diet low in saturated fats might actually be a little bit off the mark. Or a lot off the mark. <laughs> um, so reason number one. So while saturated fats may raise total cholesterol levels, there's actually only a mild association between total cholesterol levels and heart disease. So that's the first thing. Also, more recently, we've discovered that the number and the size of your cholesterol particles is actually more important um, for predicting disease than just your total cholesterol levels. So that's actually, that's actually a big deal there. And it's something that we're still not really screening for or, or looking at um, in, in uh, routine labs. Okay, reason number two is that a lot of scientists and doctors actually consider the seven countries study that was initiated by Ansel Keys back in the 1950s to be pretty biased and poorly designed because it's reported that he only included countries whose data kind of supported his theory that saturated fats were causing heart disease and um, excluded those countries that did not support that theory. So um, that's, that's actually a, a big design flaw when you're designing a, um, a study. Reason number three why saturated fats might not be as bad as we um, thought is that when the first dietary goals were created back in the 1970s, many prominent scientists, even at that time, 
refuted those, those guidelines and they insist that it was actually other factors like the increased sugar intake among Americans um, and other developed countries that was to blame for the increased rates of heart disease rather than fat, which is actually what more recent studies are confirming today. Reason number four of why saturated fats maybe aren't so bad is um, you have to keep in mind that saturated fats are a very diverse group of fats. So some types actually show beneficial effects while other types might be detrimental. And the source that you're getting those fats from is really important as well. So we can't ignore um, whether those saturated fats are coming from processed food sources or whole food sources. And that's something that's kind of just swept under the rug in our recommendations right now. Um, reason number five is that heart disease obesity rates and many other chronic disease rates have actually increased in um, direct relation to um, our fat intakes decreasing in America. So as our, our total fat intake has gone down and our saturated fat intake has gone down, our disease rates and our obesity rates have actually gone up. So it, that seems to me like those recommendations aren't actually helping. And then reason number six is that several, this is actually a, a, a big reason that we go um, into a lot more in my four week um, jumpstart program, but there are several major recent studies that have shown either no link between saturated fat intake and disease or an inverse association between the two factors, meaning they're finding either saturated fats not related at all to heart disease or high saturated fat intakes are actually related to lower heart disease rates. So definitely something that I'm excited to see more information come out on, but, um, but for now I think it's, it's beginning to seem pretty clear that our recommendations to avoid saturated fats were maybe, we might have jumped the gun on that a little bit. And it seems to me that cutting fat intakes in America has only led to higher disease rates, higher sugar intakes, higher refined carbohydrate intakes, um, higher amounts of chemicals and additives to our foods because uh, you have to make the food taste good somehow. And so you see all these fat-free products out there well, they've had to add flavor in there to replace that fat being taken away. And so, um, so there you have it. Something to think about. Okay, so my approach to fat intake with my clients that's been effective is to keep in mind a few things about fats. So we're kind of conditioned to think, and again, let me know in the comments your thoughts about this. But I feel like a lot of us are conditioned to think, and I know I was growing up, and even in my training in college, this was still being taught, um, that fats are something to be avoided. They're really dense in energy. They increase your risk of disease and obesity. However, keep in mind a balanced view. So first of all, fats are a great source of energy. They're gonna help you to feel fuller for longer because they take longer for your body to digest. They also bring a sense of um, satisfaction to your meal. So if you eat a meal that has um, fat in it, you're gonna feel more satiated by that meal than something that doesn't. And that feeling's gonna last for longer. They can also help to balance blood sugars because they do slow down your digestion of even those simple sugars and things that will raise your um, blood sugars. They helps to slow down that absorption a little bit. They may even increase your metabolism. So although fats are dense in calories per gram, they also might help your body to burn more calories if you're eating a diet that has plenty of fats in it. So that's kind of an interesting study I'd like to see more information on. They also help to, it's been shown in several studies, that fats help to increase your absorption of a lot of other vitamins and minerals. So if you eat 
a salad that has some healthy fats in it, you're going to get more of the um, vitamins and minerals out of those vegetables than you would if it was a fat-free salad. And then also fats are going to contain your fat-soluble vitamins, which have a lot of important functions in the body. So vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. Um, vitamins that a lot of us are deficient in, probably because we are avoiding fats, um, those are going to be found in fatty foods. So that's another reason to make sure you're including fats in your diet, among a lot of other important roles. So keep those things in mind. Um, so what I usually recommend is that rather than avoiding um, a whole class of, of fats, saturated fats, I actually recommend eating a diet that just contains plenty of whole food sources of fats. So if you can recognize, as a general rule, how that fat came to be, if you could reasonably make it in your own kitchen, then it's probably a real food healthy source of fats. So um, a lot of polyunsaturated vegetable oils, corn oil, canola oil have become popular um, replacements um, for saturated fats in our kitchens. However, these type of oils are really high in a type of polyunsaturated fat called omega-6s. And omega-6s are actually pro-inflammatory, meaning that they promote inflammation in your body. Now, one underlying cause between all chronic disease is that your body is in a state of increased inflammation. And so um, eating foods that are further promoting that inflammation is not a positive thing when we're talking about chronic disease. So omega-6 fatty acids are kind of like the gas pedal on inflammation, you could think of it. A different class of polyunsaturated fats called omega-3s actually reduce inflammation. They're like the brake pedal. Um, and so you do want to make sure you're getting your polyunsaturated fats from um, omega-3 sources, which would be like cold water fish are a great source of that or um, a fish oil supplement if you don't eat a lot of seafood is a good idea. So let me let me see, I'm getting a couple questions. Um, the secret to eating fats is to choose the ones you know how they were made. So yeah, as a general rule, let me see if I can explain that a little more. So the process for creating, this is where I was going with that, those, those like the corn oil, the vegetable oil, um, canola oil it's it's pretty unnatural process so it requires um, factory processes super high pressures or super high heats and usually chemicals as well to be able to extract that amount of oil from things like corn and canola and other vegetable seeds that we wouldn't normally get our oils from and so we're eating those omega-6 um, vegetable oils in unnaturally large portions. So I recommend getting those types of things just from eating nuts and seeds and things like that. You're going to be getting some of those those fats in. And when you're doing when you're eating them in those proportions and you're making sure you're getting, you know, sources of like um, omega 3s from fish and things like that, that's really the best source. You'll you'll find a little bit of omega 3s in um, like walnuts or in flaxseed, things like that. But when you're getting, when you're just getting it from nuts and seeds and not in these huge bottles of oil that have, you know, been force extracted out of these things, that's going to be a little bit better for that infl inflammatory balance than, um, than using those oils. So I actually don't use those kind of oils in my kitchen. So I prefer... Um, more natural fats like for instance butter. I can actually make butter in my own kitchen if I have fresh milk. Um, butter or cream or coconut oil, um, monounsaturated fats such as olive oil 
avocado oil or just getting um, your fats from whole olives or avocados is a great way to get those good healthy fats in. Almost n nobody disagrees that monounsaturated fats are good for you. That's pretty well established in the research. It's agreed upon among agencies across the board. We know monounsaturated fats are good. Um, and saturated fats from real food sources, I believe that those are also good for you as well. And um, the polyunsaturated fats, get them from natural sources like your nuts and seeds. And those are your kind of three major classes of fats. And one type of fat that I would avoid is what we call trans fatty acids or hydrogenated oils. They're kind of, they go hand in hand. So you'll need to look for those on your food labels. They are mostly a man-made fat. And, um, and so you're gonna see them added in as an ingredient in your foods. So you're gonna find it mostly in just, in just processed stuff, baked goods, that sort of thing. So if you're eating a lot of processed foods, you're probably getting trans fats in. Also a lot of like the peanut butters that don't need to be stirred, those have trans fats in them or um, hydrogenated oils. So look on your Nutrition Facts panel for trans fats. If it has more than like a gram per serving, they have to list it. If it's less than that, look in your ingredient list, still check your ingredient list and look for the word hydrogenated. Hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils are trans fats. So that's a key for avoiding those. Watch those ingredients list. And if you're eating whole real foods, you're not gonna be getting um, those man-made trans fats. So there's no disagreement also on trans fats across the board, that they're really bad news for your health. They have a lot of detrimental effects. They should be avoided. Um, also, if you're cooking, another place where you're gonna find trans fats is if you use like Crisco in your kitchen, that's, that's trans fats. That's a big old can of hydrogenated oils right there. So I actually have replaced that in my kitchen with just coconut oil because it's a nice kind of firmer, uh, more solid at room temperature. It's great for baking and stuff like that. And so I use that in place of Crisco. You can also use butter a lot of times in place of that. So um, let's see, what else do I need to clarify here? Um, so yeah, just to recap, my kind of go-to fats in my own kitchen that I keep stocked are olive oil, butter, real butter, and um, coconut oil. Those are the three that I use the most. I also do have some avocado oil in there. And other things that I do for sources of healthy fats are just olives, avocados, um, nuts and seeds, nut butters like peanut butter or almond butter, whatever you prefer there. So those are, that probably covers it for kind of my go to most often use sources of healthy fats. That's what I stock in my own kitchen. That's what I recommend to my clients. Um, I have uh, Kelly saying that she likes to use ghee, which is clarified butter. For those that might be dairy sensitive, ghee is a great choice because the um, dairy solids have been removed and so you're just left with like the, the fatty portion. It usually doesn't cause problems for dairy sensitive people. Let's see, I know I've missed some comments as I've been talking, but okay, so lots of comments and participation though. Thank you for your, for your input here. So where do you begin? If you're wondering where you begin, I would begin first of all um, with starting to replace some of those vegetable oils, canola oil, corn oil, those types of oils in your kitchen with some of the fat sources that we've talked about. If you're eating foods from the store and stuff, you're not gonna be able to avoid getting some vegetable oils and things in them. That's just what they still use in a lot of commercial products. Um, but if, as you switch more to like a real whole foods diet and if you can switch the oils that you're using at least in your own kitchen, that's gonna make a big difference in that balance of the types of fats you're getting. And it's gonna make, it's gonna make a difference. So I think that's a great place to start. If you are really serious about wanting to eat healthier, you're wanting to know more about fats and take some action, then I definitely recommend joining our four-week jumpstart program. Uh, we dive pretty deep into this topic and other topics each week, 
and then put it into actionable steps to help you kind of baby step your way into a healthier eating habit. So that is a great place to begin. Also, we have our private Facebook community. And if you join us in there, we have many weekly challenges and a lot of great input from our community there. We try to share some good, helpful information, live um, Q&A videos every month. So join our private community. We'll link to it in the comments if you're interested in that. We'd love to see you in there as well. So thanks for joining and we will see you on the next video.